Good morning to you all. I hope you're well wherever you are. It's a lovely day where I am. Hopefully it is with you too. This is the service for the 2nd of May. Our theme of service this morning is the vine and the branches. Our call to worship from John 15, 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Our first item of praise this morning comes from Complete Mission Praise 153 for the fruits of his creation. So Complete Mission Praise 153 for the fruits of his creation and please sing this lovely hymn along with me. For the fruits of his creation, thanks be to God. For his gifts to every nation, thanks be to God. For the ploughing, sowing, reaping, silent growth, whilst we are sleeping, future needs in earth safe keeping, thanks be to God. In the just reward of labour, God's will is done. In the help we give a neighbour, God's will is done. In a worldwide task of caring for the hungry and despairing, in the harvest we are sharing, God's will is done. For the harvest of the Spirit, thanks be to God. For the good we all inherit, thanks be to God. For the wonders that astound us, for the truths that still confound us, most of all that love has found us. Thanks be to God. Thank you for singing that lovely hymn along with me. Let us now make our prayers of approach and confession to the Lord as well as the Lord's prayer. So let us pray. Dear God, we bring before you that mixture of enthusiasm and hesitation, truth and distortion, love and indifference, which make up our nature. We bring ourselves to you and will hold nothing back. We know you will not turn against the worst of your children. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. We thank you, God, that Jesus is the true vine with his roots grounded in you. We thank you we are granted on him like branches on the vine bearing the best fruit. We confess all is not perfect with the way we live. Please forgive us when we introduce disease into the vine, preferring contamination to health, from not drawing from the sap of life, from wandering instead of growing on the framework you provide, for providing fewer fruits that were smaller in size, for not caring if any fruit is produced. Please do not lose patience in us, or sever us from the true vine. Prune our unfruitful branches, so we can bear your fruits of love. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Branches on the tree. Recently, I was working in the garden and I found a branch underneath a tree. I suppose it had been broken off by the strength of the wind. The leaves had started to wither and die. I found another branch nearby which had no leaves at all. It was completely dead. In fact, I would not even call it a branch. I would call it a stick. 
Do you think if I took these branches out into the garden and planted them in the ground, ground and watered them, they would come back to life? No, that would not work because the branches get the nutrients that they need to live from the tree. Branches cannot live or grow without the tree. Without the tree, there will never be leaves on the branches. If the branch comes from a fruit tree, there will never be fruit on the branch if it is separated from the tree. If I take this dead branch and plant it in the ground and water it, this branch will not come back to life. It will just be an old stick in the mud. That same thing is true about our life with Jesus. Listen to what Jesus said. I am the vine and you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If we keep our life connected to Jesus, we will grow. Our life will produce beautiful leaves and delicious fruit. If, however, we are separated from Jesus, our leaves will wither and die, and we will never bear any fruit. What will your life be like? Will you be a beautiful branch on the tree, or will you just be a stick in the mud? Dear Jesus, Help us to remember that apart from you, we can do nothing, nothing at all. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from John's Gospel, chapter 15, reading from verses 1 to 8 from the New International Version of the Bible a passage entitled The Vine and the Branches. So let us hear the word of God. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, whilst every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither you can bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Amen and thanks be to God for this reading of his holy word. Our second reading this morning comes from the epistle of First John chapter 4 reading from verses 7 to 21, again reading from the New International Version of the Bible, a passage entitled God's Love and Ours. So let us hear the word of God. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love amongst us. He sent his one and only Son into the world, that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him, and he in us. He has given us of his Spirit, and we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Saviour of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. 
This is how love is made complete amongst us, so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God, yet hates a brother or sister, is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister, whom they have seen, cannot love God, whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command, anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. Amen, and thanks be to God for these readings of his holy word, and to him be all glory and praise. A sermon entitled, We Will Only Bear Fruit with Jesus. As Thomas Watson has memorably said, If we bring forth any good fruit, it is not of our own growth, it comes from him, the true vine. Often Jesus, in the words he spoke, drew on the rich heritage of the Jewish people. The Old Testament is constantly portrayed as the vineyard of God or the vine. The vine symbolised Israel. The Maccabees' currency had the vine imprinted upon it. The temple had a golden vine on its front. Wealthy individuals donated gold to add to this vine. Jesus was the true vine. In the Old Testament, the imagery was that the vineyard had grown wild. Jesus was saying that just because you consider yourself as God's chosen people, you see yourself as the true vine of God. However, only Jesus was the true vine. And the prophets had said the Jewish nation had gone astray. Simply being Jewish was insufficient for salvation. To be saved, the Jewish nation had to have a proper relationship with Jesus, to be as intimately connected as the branches were to the vine. It was not nationhood which determined salvation, it was faith. The same is true for us. Jesus discussed the vine because it was a familiar scene in Palestine, then and now. The vine had to be cultivated for it to yield good fruit. The soil it grew in had to be prepared properly. It had to be pruned ruthlessly as it was a prodigious grower. Each vine is set 12 feet apart because of the speed of its growth. A young vine should not fruit for the first three years, so should be radically pruned to conserve its energy. When grown, it is cut back in December and January. There are two types of branches those that bear fruit and those that do not. Those that do not bear fruit must be ruthlessly pruned back so they will do not diminish the plant's energy. Jesus was aware of this. Surprisingly, the vine wood was not particularly useful. It was too soft. During the year, offerings of wood were brought to the temple under Jewish law, but the vine wood must not be brought. The vine wood should only be discarded by the cultivators and burned. Jesus makes this analogy. Some branches bear fruit like he does. Others cannot be used because they bear no fruit. Jesus was first talking here about the Jews which the prophets had discussed. Since they refused to accept Jesus as Messiah, they, like the branches, would wither and die. Second, Jesus was talking about Christians generally, who talked about their faith without living it. They were branches, which may have leaves but bore no fruit. Jesus was also talking about those who, he said, would commit themselves to the cause, but only cared about themselves. Hopefully, we are not in either of these two categories. So, Jesus said we can be dead branches by refusing to listen to him, saying we will do something and then not do it in practice, or say we will serve him until difficulties emerge which sway our loyalties. If we are fruitless branches, 
We will not be saved. We will just be discarded and destroyed. What do we mean by abiding in Christ? Let us consider an analogy. Imagine there is a weaker person who has yielded to temptation and fallen away from Christ. Imagine how this person, now this person has a good friend who saves them from reaching a worse situation and brings them back to Christ. For this person to continue to do the right thing, they must remain in that friendly relationship. If not, their weaker nature and the temptations they face daily will be overwhelming. To abide with Christ, we must live with God. We cannot hope that this happens by chance. We must actively seek that it happens. This should be done through prayer. When we are good disciples to Christ, our own lives are enriched. We become the fruitful branch. This in turn makes God happy that we are the fruitful disciple. This is the greatest thing we can do in our own Christian life for ourselves, for others, for Christ and for God. As Becca Goings has memorably said, the only way to be fruitful for God is if your heart is his garden. What a beautiful quotation that is. In John's epistle, John tells us to love one another for God is love. Those who are in relationship with God profess love and know God. Those that are not in a relationship with God do not profess love and so do not know God. Do we know God well enough? God's love is shown by the actions of his son Jesus Christ who died for us on the cross, the ultimate gift of love. God was willing to send his own son into a world which rejected him and ultimately ended his life. Jesus was sent by God as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Do we know Jesus Christ well enough? God's love is also shown through the fellowship of believers. God's love and Christ's love are reflected in the fraternity which should exist between believers. God freed us from sin through Christ's death, also through the gift of the Spirit. Divine love exists in us, encouraging us to love as Christ loved. We must work with the Spirit and each other. Do we know the Spirit and each other well enough? John wants us to see if we are truly one with Christ. John wants us to see if we act out our faith. If we love one another, John believes, only then we will love Christ. A person who believes in God or in Jesus tends to be a loving person. A person who does not believe in God in Jesus tends not to be a loving person. Of course, none of us is perfectly loving. We let ourselves down at times and do not always practice our faith. Christ dying on the cross for our sins liberates us to have an eternal relationship of love with him. Through brotherly and sisterly love, we can touch God and Christ's presence. Since the Spirit dwells within us, we know God is present in our lives today. We are filled with joy, with peace, with patience, with kindness, with goodness, with faithfulness with gentleness, with self-control, and with love. For John, love is the most important quality we must have. God's presence is also evident because Jesus became the saviour of the world. God's presence is further apparent in our lives if we acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God. John did not like members of his church denying this basic principle. God's presence presence is evident in our lives when we are aware of his persisting love through the death of Jesus Christ. We should not fear the day of judgment if we have love. The final evidence of God being present in our lives is that we must love those around us if we love God. We cannot love each other perfectly as only God exhibits that perfect love. We must however still love as Paul has said in 1 Corinthians, and now these three remain, 
faith, hope and love. But the greatest of these is love. This is the principle we must exhibit throughout our lives, as difficult as that can be at times. Let me finish with this. Peter Miller, a Baptist pastor living during the American Revolution, pleaded with George Washington, the president, to save the life of the evil-minded Michael Whitman, arrested for treason and sentenced to die. Only when Washington realised that Miller had walked 70 miles to save his worst enemy, was the pardon granted. We, like Miller, are asked to show that same selfless love too. Hopefully this amazing story inspires us to do so. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And now, let us make our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession to God. So let us pray. Thank you, God, for loving us even when we turn away from you. We are grateful for your constant care and concern. Though we feel unworthy of your great love, we thank you that through our weaknesses you give us strength, and in our wanderings you show us the way. What a great world it would be if we kept our lives grafted in the true vine of Jesus Christ, and like good branches produced the beautiful fruits of his Spirit, we pray for the sick, the disabled and the mentally ill, like Jesus did. We pray that the lost and bewildered are restored to dignity and hope like Jesus did. We pray we open our hearts to those who are rejected by society like Jesus did. We pray that we forgive our enemies like Jesus did. We pray that we give away what we have and do not expect anything in return like Jesus did. We pray we create a new community of differing people like Jesus did with his disciples. We pray we can carry our crosses with courage and faith just like Jesus did. Bind us close to Christ and let his spirit flow through us, healing our defects and helping us produce the fruits of love both in and out of season. We pray for anyone with coronavirus, just as we pray for their carers and for their families. We pray for the government and for the scientific community and all the difficult decisions that they take on a daily basis. We pray for the continued successful rollout of the vaccine and the public's positive response. We pray that we remember that this is a global pandemic and everyone needs to be vaccinated for everyone to be safe. So we pray for um, the situation in India and also in Brazil and other countries that are suffering at the moment. We pray for anyone awaiting other surgical procedures are attended to quickly. We pray for the ending of all wars, terrorism and torture and for a more peaceful and tolerant world. All these prayers we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And now our final hymn this morning comes from Complete Mission Praise 631, Tell Out My Soul. So one of my favourite hymns, hopefully yours too. Complete Mission Praise 631, Tell Out My Soul. Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord, unnumbered blessings give my spirit, voice tender to me, the promise of his word, in God my Saviour shall my heart rejoice. Tell out my soul the greatness of his name, make known his might, the deeds his arm has done, his mercy sure. 
from age to age the same. His holy name, the Lord, the mighty one. Tell at my soul the greatness of his might. Pers and all minions lay the glory by proud hearts and slow. Burn wheels are put to flight, the hungry fed, the humble lifted high. Tell at my soul the glories of his word. Firm is his promise and his mercy. Sure tell at my soul the greatness of the Lord. To children's children and forevermore. Thank you for singing that wonderful hymn along with me. And let us all now say the benediction together. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me in this act of worship this morning. I hope you enjoyed singing the hymns along with me. I hope you have a really good week, and I will see you next week at the same time. So thank you and goodbye. <laughs>